there's a section where James Brown says. Um, so the band drops out and there are two measures of Clyde Stubblefield playing this beat. And right at that, at that section where the, this break beat happens, um, they have, it sounds like they've added some sort of compression and reverb of some, some type to it where all of a sudden the drums go from being pretty just raw and dry to, it's got this, this thing, this the sound just sort of pops yeah. out of nowhere and then it's just james and clyde grooving for eight measures and then that stops the whole the rest of the band comes in they play to the uh to the end of nine minutes at the, at the final final last few uh last few seconds of the song kind of as as the song fades out uh clyde does another solo that's a little more um he gets a little more involved and starts playing some other stuff with it uh but i you know a nine minute song he he, I don't think he ever touches the floor tom. I think he hits the rack tom precisely twice or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. He barely dings the ride cymbal, I think, precisely twice in, in nine minutes or, or three times or something. Wow. Um, and it's an incredible piece of drumming. I mean... It is. I, I, you know, I, I think it was pretty revolutionary for the time. I, I don't know of anyone else from that period who played... You know, it, it was recorded, a, you know, several months before I was born. So obviously I wasn't there. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything else from that time period that sounds like what Clive Stubblefield did on, on Funky Drummer. No. And so, um, so yeah, the, so the song was, um, so the song was released as a single. It came, it went and just sort of disappeared. It wasn't on any of James Brown's uh, 12 inch LPs or anything. And in the 80s, it got rediscovered by hip-hop producers. Uh, I, I believe Hank Shockley found it, or uh, that's my understanding. But it suddenly started showing up everywhere in the 80s. And that's when I first became aware of it, in, in the 80s. And, and I knew it from my first real exposure to it was, um, was Fight the Power by, by uh, Public Enemy, which was just an amazing track and especially at the time yeah. oh, that thing just that that track just exploded out of every speaker I, I heard it from and those drums you know and then he kept hearing those drums everywhere uh, there was a huge hit called uh, poison bell dev devoe in the uh late 80s early 90s with the real fairness drum beat that it's a totally different rhythm but it's they sampled the snare drum and there's that that weird oh. snare drum sound again um and for decades the song was the the most uh the most sampled breakbeat in history i think just recently in the past couple of years it's been surpassed by um uh a breakbeat the opening from the song impeach the president by um by the honey drippers which is a, a really cool really? breakbeat as well but I, as far as i can tell and my, my source for all of this is the website uh who sampled.com for in terms of um these where these samples are showing up in records and uh yeah so i mean this beat i think everybody on the planet's heard it in some form or another or somewhere on some song um you just may not know it it's it's just been a revolutionary sample and i've seen it listed as sort of the sort of the birthplace of hip-hop in some ways or, or yeah. you know like one of the founding just founding bedrock samples of hip, of hip-hop uh, and of course, it's crossed over to pop, all sorts of different places. You know, Sinead O'Connor had a big hit sure. with it um, back in the '90s, and and um, you know, a friend of mine was told me the other day you heard it in some commercial on TV, maybe Burger King or something. I, I don't remember exactly what, but I mean, Damn. it's still very much, very much around. My thought with that is is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason they would have chosen this is because it was so accessible. It was so easy to chop a naked drum part that was yeah. happening for eight measures by itself. Right. Yeah. I mean, that seems pretty obvious. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, that's kind of the whole genesis of these breakbeats, you know, finding, and, and I mean, back in the seventies, they were doing with turntables and two copies of the same record, which I mean, that's, that's a skill I will never master. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> totally, that's, that's rocket science to me. I, I don't understand how they do that, but they do. And, uh, you know, so to be able to just continuously cut back and forth between two records with these, with these beats long before sampling, um, oh. 
Uh, it's it's an incredible skill, absolutely an incredible yeah. skill. 